order to fully understand Rumiko Takahashi and her contributions to the field of manga as a whole, you have to understand her place within that field, and that involves examining her influences, peers, and followers. This is what Orbiting Rumik World is dedicated to exploring. Manga has become more and more ubiquitous outside of Japan. Topics that were once esoteric and obscure within foreign fandom have been brought to light and discussed with the same monomania that was once reserved for the most enlightened of otaku. Perhaps one area that is still largely unexplored is an admittedly metatextual topic, a discussion about the discussion of manga in Japan. One of the most esteemed manga critics is Jun Ishikawa, a mangaka himself, and part of the famous New Wave movement of the late 1970s. It is in his writing about manga in countless books and articles, and alongside his late-night television panel, where he has spent years debating manga, that he has made a name for himself and become familiar in manga circles within Japan. Ishikawa was born in 1951 in Toyota City, Aichi Prefecture, a city named for the Toyota Motor Company that calls it home. Ishikawa would find himself working for the automobile company for a single month in his 20s, before leaving in 1976 to pursue a career in manga. Ishikawa stated, I'm going to lose my ability to think, and if I don't do this, I'm going to go downhill. In college at Meiji University, he counted Kaiji Kawaguchi and Ryu Honma as fellow members of his manga club. After leaving Toyota, Ishikawa moved in with his parents, who quickly became annoyed with their son throwing away a good job so quickly and doing nothing around the house. When they pressed Ishikawa about his future plans, he flippantly told them that he would become a manga artist. Consequently, he realized he needed to begin making an effort to pursue his new vocation. With his career launching in the mid-1970s, Ishikawa soon found himself grouped among what was known as the New Wave, a loose classification of a coterie of young artists from the late 1970s into the early 1980s who were debuting outside of the major manga magazines, and were focused on the subjects beyond the quartet of shonen, shoujo, gekiga, and adult manga that comprised the primary classification of manga at the time. The major figures to come out of the new wave were Katsuhiro Otomo, Daijiro Morohoshi, and Hideo Azuma, though Azuma rejected the term in a 1981 interview. The new wave dissolved in 1980 with the launch of Big Comic Spirits and Young Magazine, which were created to be more high-profile homes for the avant-garde manga crafted by these young artists, and many of them relocated to these two magazines. It was in the early days of Big Comic Spirits that Ishikawa found himself published side-by-side side with a young rising star who was concurrently publishing two of the most popular manga of all time, Rumiko Takahashi. Takahashi helped launch Big Comic Spirits alongside two of the new wave, Ishikawa and Azuma, while at the same time publishing Urusayatsura each week in Shonen Sunday. Ishikawa established himself as a gag artist, with series such as From K, which was a comical, autobiographical look at his own life, Chandora in Big Comic Spirits, and Columns on Pro Wrestling. His drawing style is cartoonish and simplistic, and his series are often brief, humorous, and absurdist tales. Soon, however, in addition to his own manga, Ishikawa began to write columns of manga criticism, highlighting obscure manga that interested him. These columns would eventually be collected into two volumes, Manga no Jikan and Manga Note. In the mid-1990s, Ishikawa had edited a special issue of Manga Action, which he used to highlight favorite authors that worked in the manga industry. From the success of this issue, he then wrote his first book of manga criticism, Manga no Jikan. The success of this book helped develop manga criticism as a more mainstream topic and led to the launch of BS Manga Yawa, or Manga Night Talk, a late-night manga criticism and discussion program. Through Ishikawa's criticism, he has become a respected connoisseur of manga. He served on the committee for selecting the Osamu Tezuka Cultural Prize from its inception in 1997 until its 12th ceremony in 2008. Along with Hisashi Aguchi, he has compiled a collection of the best short stories written in manga, a collection entitled Japanese Short Manga Masterpiece Collection, which includes stories by Osamu Tezuka, Sanpei Shirato, Shotaro Ishinomori, Ryoichi Ikigami, Rumika Takahashi, Kinshi Hirokane, and many more. In his book Manga no Jikan, 
Ishikawa introduced several manga series that would be considered underground comics. Many of them dealt with motorcycle gangs, gay relationships, little-known shoujo series, and obscure gag strips. The book became a significant hit and established him as a manga tastemaker. While publishing columns of manga criticism, he was continuing to draw manga, write novels, and even provide designs for video games, such as his design for Superman in the 1987 Kimco game on the Famicom. His fame as a serious analyst of manga would continue to rise as he served as a panelist on BS Manga Yawa from 1996 until 2009. The rest of the panel included producer, critic, and Gainix founder Toshio Okada, and manga critic, manga artist, and grandson of Soseki Natsume, Fusunosuke Natsume. Natsume and Ishikawa serve as the baby boomer perspective on manga, while Okada and moderator Takahiro Otsuki are the voices of the otaku generation, who were teenagers in the 1980s. Each member of the panel is said to contribute a different style of analysis, with Ishikawa providing the most blunt assessment of the chosen work, according to his co-host Natsume. Natsume went on to state that some of Ishikawa's comments have drawn the ire of the authors and their fans. An example of Ishikawa's criticism devolving into a feud was his comment about the way that fellow New Wave artist Hideo Azuma drew feet, which Ishikawa stated were too small. Picking up on their prickly relationship, the god of manga himself, Osamu Tezuka, mocked the two by having characters based upon each of them marry one another in his early 1980s manga, Rainbow Parakeet. It was not only Azuma who fell out with Ishikawa. At one time, Ishikawa was close friends with manga writer Marley Karib. However, as Ishikawa writes in his book, Secret Bookshelf, he and Karib had a falling out. In the 1980s, Ishikawa was publishing Chandora in Big Comic Spirits and created a character named Dr. Kaze, based on Karib's appearance. Years later, in 1987, Ishikawa carried his character over to his new manga, From K, where he commented on Karib frequently attending parties, becoming angry and leaving. He poked fun at the writer, claiming he would spin around in a tornado like Dr. Kaze when he got drunk at parties, before storming out. Ishikawa further stated that Karib always claimed to dislike parties, but would frequently come to them and then grow fussy and leave. Ishikawa stated that he had exaggerated the story for comedic effect, but that it had a lot of truth in it as well. Ishikawa would later discover that Karib took a shot at him in his own manga, Meso o Border, by showing Ishikawa and fellow manga writer and friend to Ishikawa and Karib, Natsuo Sekikawa, arriving at a party, behaving snobbishly, parading around in their underwear, and growing jealous if one of their peers ever had a hit manga. Ishikawa states that he was annoyed by Karib's manga, which he said was humorless. However, Sekikawa was furious. Ishikawa publicly sided with Sekikawa, and Marley Karib had to print an apology in the following issue of Manga Action, the magazine that published Border. The row destroyed the friendship between the trio. Jun Ishikawa stated on his Twitter that he regretted not making up with Marley Karib after attending his funeral. It is through Ishikawa's collection of short stories that we can bring Rumiko Takahashi into the discussion, but we can touch on his interactions with Takahashi in other venues as well. Earlier in the 1980s, Takahashi did an illustration of Jun Ishikawa and then wrote a single-page manga about meeting him, agreeing to exchange books and getting a signed copy of his latest manga, only to forget to send him a copy of hers for five years. One of the policies of his television program BS Manga Yawa was to only look at a single work by an author during the show's entire run. However, Takahashi is one of the very rare exceptions to this rule. In 1996, the show took up Takahashi's Maison Koku for an hour-long analysis. The episode saw Ishikawa joined by Kentaro Takakuma, author of Even a Monkey Can Draw Manga, and voice actor Tarako. One of the criticisms Ishikawa placed on Takahashi's work was that the story remained static and didn't develop. In 2009, the show looked at Takahashi's then-recently-completed Inuyasha. The panel holds the series up as embodying all the elements of Takahashi's prior works. Love triangles, time travel, supernatural elements, action, and some moments of slapstick comedy. They comment that the series is Takahashi's Dragon Ball, not just in the sense of its popularity within her body of work, but that the series is a journey, traveling across the landscape in search of the missing shards of the Shikon Jewel, much like Goku and his friends in their hunt for the titular Dragon Balls. They speak about Takahashi's art style changing subtly. 
Here we see Ishikawa demonstrating the way that Takahashi drew faces and hair, and how that had changed by the time of Inuyasha. The panel mentions the popularity of her work overseas, stating that they heard the book had sold out in bookstores in France and America before it was even translated, stating that her artwork and storyline are understandable even without a translation. They discuss the appeal of a series like this sitting on a bookshelf in France compared to Maison Ikoku, a series they believed would have been inaccessible to their imagined French and American reader by comparison. They sum this up in an affirmation of the universality of shonen manga when compared to Takahashi's seinen series. Fusunosuke Natsume states that Takahashi seemed to find the story as she went along, that in a true sense, the manga does not begin in some ways until volume 8 with the revelation of Naraku's face. They point out that Takahashi seemed uncertain if the time travel element would be more important early on as we saw demons in the present day as well as in the feudal era. Then we see the slow addition of more traveling companions, such as Shippo and Moroku, who is used to introduce Naraku. Then Naraku is tied to Kikyo via Onigumo, before revealing his true nature and ushering in the thrust of the overall series in Volume 8. Natsume concludes that Takahashi, at this point in her weekly writing, must have felt like she had found the direction the series was going to head. Natsume also makes the connection between a love triangle with Inuyasha, Kagome, and the deceased Kikyo, comparing it with the love triangle of Godai, Kyoko, and the memory of her deceased husband, Soichiro, in Maison Ikoku. He adds that this is also the case in Mitsuru Adachi's touch, and is something that can likely be traced back to Ashita no Jo. The BS Manga Yawa panel discusses that 90% of the reader response to their episode on the analysis of Inuyasha is from women, and that the previously mentioned love triangle, alongside Seshomaru's appearance, are all attractive to female readers. The panel further states that this is something only a female author would know about and know how to achieve in a shonen series. The panel also openly wonder if Takahashi had wanted to end Inuyasha earlier, but perhaps the high sales of the manga encouraged her to continue, a comparison they draw with Akira Toriyama's Dragon Ball. Through the lens of Junishikawa, this is meant to be a primer into the larger world of manga criticism. There are a number of names and works to mention for those that might wish to explore more on the topic. Junishikawa's three books, Manga no Jikan, Manga Note, and Secret Bookshelf, Natsume Fusunosuke's Challenge to Manga Studies, and Eiji Otsuka, the author of MPD Psycho and the Kurosaki Corpse Delivery Service, who has written a number of books on manga culture and consumption, including Monogatari Shihiron. <laughs>